In this last section on animation, I'll look at secondary motion and adding a little emotion to a character. We've blocked in the poses, we've smoothed out the motion, and we've animated to the camera so that in this camera, from frame 96 to 144 where this animation takes place, we can really see this character raise his arm emphatically. He's already in motion on the raise as we turn to the right and follow his gaze out there. Now we're ready to add some secondary motion to it. This might show up in the previous camera, might show up here, or be an overlap. I'm going to work on his ears first. For his ears, I'm going to have them raise up a little bit. They're interested. He's perking up his ears. They usually hang down, but like a cat, they'll stick a little more up when he's excited. I'll start with this at the end of the other motion, making sure I have enough frames available. As we can see, I can slide the playback range around very fluidly as I need. He starts to move his arm at 84. I've added in a shoulder turn, which starts actually at about 77, and helps the arm along. Somewhere in here I want the ears to raise up, because he's interested. Maybe at about 79. As he starts to turn, his ears perk. I'll pick this first ear, and add a key in, pressing Shift E. I'll say over here fairly quick by 86 or 87, his ear raises up. Now what I can also do to give them a little more character in this rig is pick one, hold Shift, and pick the child bone. Now the parent is in white and the child is in green, so when I rotate them, they both rotate and key. That's another way to think about it. Not just rotating the whole piece, but how does it change shape very fluidly. I'll key those. His ears raise up because he's excited, and press Shift E. And I'll make sure I key both bones back here on 79 as well. Let's see if this worked. His ear comes up, he looks over, and he's animated. Good. Now, once his ears have come up, and I need to do this on the left ear as well, will they start to droop back down shortly? So, really, by about the same range, that left ear should be coming up, or his right, our left. I'll go into a perspective and make the animation work. I'll pick the parent bone, hold shift and pick the child, and set their keys by pressing shift E. I'll come over a few frames, and rotate them up and out. His ears will flare out and key them. Now, I'll come over when his head is turned, maybe at about 98, and I'll let his ears relax just a little bit. And key them again. I'll spin around and check the others. It's very important to keep things fluid. We can have what's called a moving hold, where somebody is almost stopped, but if it's static, it's dead in CG, so we have to watch out for that. So his ears will be up and excited, but just a little bit down at the end of that. Let's see if this works from the camera. I'll go to shading and turn off the x-ray joints and see how this looks. The camera starts out at 96. When I hit play, His arms are up, and there's a just a perceptible motion of the ears coming down. Maybe I can pull this forward a little bit or move the camera around. And that's the other thing. It's okay to move the camera around a little bit in where it sits in the timeline, as long as the time still works in the animatic. So I may want to change that just a bit. I'll select my camera, which I'm in camera 2, and I can see the keys for it. I'm going to open up my time range here to about 84 and take this range by holding shift and clicking on the timeline to select a range. And then I'll grab in the middle on the yellow arrows and pull that range of animation for the camera back. Let's see if this worked a little better. Back here at frame 84, we see the ears go. He's excited, and I've got good secondary motion. I want to think about this. When somebody's talking, when they're excited, or even if they're just sitting still, there's actually a lot of motion going on. So we as animators have to consciously bring it to life.